three, two, one, action, and it's Mr. Sean Maloney, everybody. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Settle down, settle down, all right. Uh, well, when Robert told me I get to play on a journey today, I was so excited because it's actually not not even joking. It's one of my favorite instruments of all time because it's the easiest to just sit down oh and play. The perfect hobbyist organ. So I had no problem with coming and driving down. I even offered to. I said, well, if somebody's going to play on a journey, I want to. It's my favorite one, and I don't have one, so I'm going to come down. So I'm just going to start with a little music, and I'll just kind of showcase some things that I like about one of our models here. So let me switch cameras. Let's see if this looks good. Oh, yeah. I can see the other side here. So here's a new rhythm on here I like a lot called Dixieland. That was uh, the Louis Armstrong trumpet sound, actually taken directly from the record. Uh, it's so cool. I love that sound because it actually automatically puts that there for you. Uh, right when you play that instrument, you got his Louis Armstrong regular trumpet on the top. And then I could even pull up his shaking trumpet on the bottom. Where you see him holding his breath when he's playing. So really fun sound uh, so i'm gonna have a good time today i hope you are too if you have any questions throughout or anything you want to comment just let us know here uh, raise your hand or go like this you know so one thing i love about uh, this instrument is like i said it's the comfort to me so when i come drive all the way to tucson i set up all this st uh, camera stuff and then i get to sit down and i didn't even get to rehearse too much of anything but it doesn't matter because this is one of those instruments you can just sit down and play. Uh, what's nice is the cabinet. This is uh, after the Easy series, they started getting really nice with the cabinets as you go up. So it's actually a really, really nice piece of furniture. It's, uh, this one's mahogany. They might also have oak uh, floating around somewhere. I think actually it looks like Carrie's sitting at an oak, uh, oak model there. So I guess you do have that. Ooh, looks, look, it works just the same, if you can see him. Uh, but yeah, there's this, this thing going across the front that I love. This looks super sleek. If you turn off the lights, it's just really nice. It looks like a fancy piano. And all you do is you lift the control panel lid here. And guess what? The entire thing is a music rack. So you can fit more pages and songs and books than any other instrument. So I kind of like that. Because uh, sometimes if you're like me and you're trying to learn some new songs, you might have them kind of all spread around. Or maybe you're going to play a medley and you want to see several songs at the same time. 
uh, that's what I love about it. I can kind of look all the way across and play a song. Uh, but that's not it, obviously. They added a lot of things. They w Basically what they did with this instrument, the whole reason, it, its purpose, the reason it came out, is uh, for people like me who want that comfort and ease of use, they took all those things out of the out of the big instruments that you see kind of behind me. A lot of these high-end features that cost $80,000 sometimes, and they put all of that stuff, or most of that stuff, into the journey. So you've got tons of, tons of choices. So speaking of choices, one of my favorites, uh, if you have an easy series, and I know some of you do on here, or maybe a fanfare or a journey, you got some people in here with those. Uh, my favorite thing is that they, they kind of split everything up into that full band, pianist and guitarist. You might be used to that. But what they do on the instruments as they go up, they add what are called signature styles. And these are exciting. Uh, does anybody know what a signature style is? You can raise your hand if you do. If you don't, well, I'll go ahead and explain it. Uh, a signature style is a rhythm style that's based on an original arrangement. Does that make sense? So if you see something with a certain name, uh, I'm going to play one right now called Floyd Piano. Do you have any idea who that might be based on? I'm seeing some lips move and say Floyd Kramer, I think. Hopefully, or you were saying something else and I just read your mind. So. Floyd Kramer. So this is great because now if I want a country pianist, it's not just any pianist. It's my favorite pianist. It's a signature style by Floyd Kramer. So let's listen to this, and all you're going to hear at first is just piano, just Floyd. Add some drums. Do you guys hear that right hand? It's doing actually the Floyd Kramer style on its own. I'm playing with one finger. cool. So that's what's exciting is it's not just any old pianist. Right when I touch country pianist, I've got several options on my screen. So rather than just have that one choice, if I scroll down to the next, it said Floyd Piano. And I can actually pull Floyd Kramer out of the blue and uh, have him play with me. And that's exciting. So it's not, it's not often you get to play with your favorite artists. So I have a, I have a great time doing that. So I want to show you something cool that I did during that song, actually. And this is a really cool feature. I don't know if anybody uh, has mastered the art of that fill-in where you put your foot in the hole on the right and you kick. Who has that mastered? Some of you might. Nobody? Carrie does. Good, good. <laughs> so uh, they have a solution to that. Because uh, on this instrument, they figure, okay, well, what are some other ways you can do that? They added a feature. Let me see if I can pull it up here, actually. I think I have it. Can you see that? It says uh, Pedal Magic and Auto Bass. Well, what Pedal Magic is is just one button right here. And all you got to do is touch it, and it actually gives you some uh, choices that light up. So when you touch it, you get these different features that kind of teach you the bass. Long and short are kind of like a little teaching uh, tool you can put on. And if you press it three times, one, two, three, it lights up a 
a little light called fill. And this is really cool because basically what it's doing is it's putting my uh, fill feature on my little foot pedals here. See, you can see my feet there. I got I to gotta clean my shoes. Uh, so what I did is as I was playing that song, all I have to do is touch any pedal here and it'll do the fill in. Hear that? So it's just a really, really cool way to make it a lot easier for people because if you're not playing those pedals on the floor, which I'm a hobbyist, so I do not, uh, I like to put the fill switch on the pedals there so when I'm playing, I don't have to try kicking one way or the other and you know fall off my seat or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to use that actually in my next song too. I want to pick it up a little bit and play some uh, fun, uh, quick stuff here style should I do? Let's do pop. There's a pop button here, and I'm going to go to my guitarist and hire a guitar group called the Surfaris, uh, who did the song called Wipeout. So I'm going to play Wipeout, and another thing that they improved in here that you'll, that you'll see when I do the fill switch is they added a lot of what's called memory and computer power to this thing. So basically, when you use a fill switch, instead of just doing a little drum thing and then it's done it actually keeps going and it does a whole other section of the song if I hold it down so during this song uh, you might not be able to see me because it's hard for me to switch cameras while I'm playing but basically what I'm going to be doing is taking part of the song whoops that's the wrong one I wanted to show you this one more time whoop yep so when it goes to the part of the song uh, where there's a drum solo all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit any of these pedals down and it's going to do the drum solo for me. So here we go. I want to see some people doing this, okay? We're going to go surfing here. we got to get the blood flow so you're not just sitting around here all day, right? Here we go. Did anybody, was anybody dancing during that? You, gotta, you have to get involved or you fall asleep, you know? That's what happens when I sit in front of a computer all day. I get sleepy. So you gotta, gotta put something into it. So that is a really fun style to play. And uh, like I said, they improved the memory so that when I play that fill, it does that entire solo for me and I can play on top of it if I want or I don't have to. So, yeah, like I said, a lot of the big, big, high-end features they put into this smaller instrument, me-sized instrument. <laughs> so one thing they added that is actually coming from uh, the higher-end touchscreen instruments uh, is, a, is a really cool feature called Fake It. I don't know if you guys have heard of Fake It at all, but it's a really, really cool feature. Some of you might have a, kind of a simplified version of it where you touch it, 
and you kind of rock back and forth between a couple of notes and it fills in, you know, nice notes. Uh, what's great that they added is a brand new feature called Auto Fake It. Raise your hand if you've heard of this. This is great for uh, if you're not as much of a jazz improviser or, you know, soloist. What they do is they kind of put the soloist inside for you. So if I go to something like, let's do, here's one that's a really hard song to play. It's called Take Five by Dave Brubeck. It's a, uh, a s the only song I can think of that's written in a 5-4 time signature. So every measure you're counting to five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You have to remember that fifth beat. Uh, I'm going to play this, and I'm going to use my Fake It Plus feature. And what it's going to do is, rather than me have to try to improvise something, I can just hold down any black key. And it's going to fill in an entire solo for me. So I'm going to have Paul Desmond, the original saxophone player, uh, play this with me. So here's Dave Brubeck. Time for a solo. Fake it. Hold down. Notice my left hand keeps playing the chords. The real solo from the song. So cool. Woohoo! So that is Take Five by Dave Brubeck. Really fun and difficult song to play, but when you, when you can have somebody play that solo for you, it works out. Just sounds a lot better <laughs> than if I tried it. Because it's a really tough one to play. So speaking of uh, signature styles, another one of my favorites in here uh, that kind of goes to show that improved memory. And even more so, it's just a beautiful, beautiful style. Um, and listen to the background on this one. I'm going to use music so I play it perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this song. It is called Unforgettable. And I'm going to play it exactly as written here and what the instrument is going to do is it's going to fill in all the right in-betweens for me so i have nat king cole's original orchestra playing with me and i get to sing not with my voice luckily but with the instrument so i'm going to play the melody here for unforgettable here we go It's important to turn off the fake it feature when you're done using it. Because like right now, I just hit a wrong note because the fake it was on. Let's try that one more time. Beautiful intro.
just gush all over that because it's like making my hair stand up. Uh, love the rhythm. Love that rhythm. So did you hear all the in-betweens there with the strings playing with me, not against me? So if you if you do that at home, if you try playing with your rhythms and you play these, uh, we've got a couple classes online about this now called Playing in Sync. I think Joe Fontesh has taught a class about that, Bart Jensen. Just saying if you play the music just as is, it'll a lot of these rhythm styles, the signature styles, will play along with you. So kind of exciting. So let me move along here, obviously, with more rhythm styles. And there are 144 rhythm styles in there. Uh, you Actually, in addition to all those styles, obviously, they have these buttons in the middle. Who has buttons in the middle? Who has setups? They're called setups. If you've got anything, I think, from an easy 10 on up, you should have a couple of them. They might have five or or eight, like this one has eight. So you've probably seen me press them a couple times throughout, where if I start off rhythm, and I like the sound, I can play that sound for a little while, but if I want something else, these setups in the middle just give me a sound automatically to go with my rhythm. Now, another step beyond that that I really love, you can't quite see them because it's a little washed out here, but over here, I have these buttons called categories. So that's if you're not finding the sound you want in these buttons, you want something really specific, you can go find it by category. And they've got everything from symphonic sounds to jazz and swing sounds to country sounds. And when you touch one of these buttons, all it does is it picks those sounds the best from every genre and put them in here. There's one in uh, this instrument, the Journey, that I really like. This came from the higher end models. It's called Nostalgic. And this is really nice because it plays a lot of the, um, the sounds that you might be familiar with, and not just by you know, clarinet or saxophone or guitar, but they actually have them by name. So let me show you an example here. Oops, wrong button looks kind of like this. So on the screen, you'll, you'll see all these. Whenever you touch one of these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it actually gives you that brand new option. So you have a lot of really, really cool sounds based on the artist. So if you want Harry James on the top and Benny Goodman on the bottom, just touch number one, and that's what you get. You know, Or if you want Tijuana Brass, Mr. Showman, just gives you all the sounds. And like before, on that zero position, my favorite sound was the Louis Armstrong trumpet. And it comes up on the bottom too. So, But throughout these, you have different ones. Harry James. Tommy Dorsey's trombone. Jimmy Dorsey. Awesome organ on the top, based on Dennis Oz sound. So a lot of cool familiar names that are built in. Uh, and those are category setups. And obviously, if you have something like song setup on yours, they do have it on this as well. You don't lose that. Uh, one of my favorite features, this one has hundreds of songs built into it. So just find the song in alphabetical order, pick it out, and play it. I'm going to actually pick a song, one of my favorites in here, called Mac the Knife. Have you guys heard that song before? You might have. Uh, and I'm going to showcase a new feature as I do this. So let's play Mac the Knife. It's a rhythm called Mix Swing. And what I'm going to do is I am going to touch a button halfway through the song, and you're going to hear a huge change. Uh, like I said, the memory in this instrument, the computer power, is ridiculous. Uh, what I can do basically in the background is have the entire song, the arrangement keeps changing and evolving with you rather than playing that same little you know, four-measure loop over and over again. Uh, if you listen to the background of this song, you're going to hear it. It's just it keeps changing throughout. And that's because of a special button that I'm going to use 
Let's see if I have a picture of it so you can see it up close. I can't get the camera too close to this. Here's this. There we go. It's called Alter Style. Do you see that on the screen? Is that showing? Okay. Just one little button. Alter Style. And it's going to take every rhythm in my entire instrument and double it. Because now I can tell my band in the back to do something different. It's going to be the same band playing, but I'm going to tell them to do something totally different. Altering the style. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll do a couple more examples, but let's just play Mac the Knife. And like I said, I'm going to touch that button. It's over here. I'm going to touch it about halfway through. So keep an eye out for that right there. And I'm even going to transpose this as well, because I think it sounds really nice in the key of E flat. So I'm going to use my transpose right on the dashboard here and go to E flat. Here we go. Not old Mackie's back. Whew! Isn't that fun? I got to play a whole arrangement with uh, Bobby Darren's original group. So that is so cool. If you listen to the uh, the record, you put that on. It sounds exactly like that. Obviously, there's a guy singing, uh, but I was doing that with my right hand, and in the background, you hear all those changes kind of happening for me. That Brass picked up a lot. Uh, the drums changed. But let me just kind of show you, sort of close up, what it was doing. Probably hard to tell when I'm playing a song, but if you just start it, it's nice and soft rhythm. Halfway through, you touch the altar style. They all pick up a bit. So basically, it's kind of like taking, like I said, every rhythm that you have in here and multiplying it by two because now you have two ways to play it. Another example I like a lot, you may have heard this rhythm in the past. Uh, this is something where you hear if somebody's playing in the mood, there's a rhythm called swing band, which is actually uh, Glenn Miller's original band here. So if you start it and play, it, play with it, it sounds like this. <laughs> Really, really cool style, perfect for that song. But what if you say, oh, you know, I love that, but I want to play a different Glenn Miller song. You can still hire Glenn Miller and say, play a different style, play alter style. So 
he changes the entire background and he's still Glenn Miller, but now he's gonna sound like this. Same rhythm. There's Tuxedo Junction. That was the same exact rhythm style. And you can play two completely different songs and still have Glenn Miller. And as you can tell, just like any signature style, they were kind of playing in between me. Did you hear that? I kind of made it obvious when I went. But you probably heard some soloists in the background, which is a really fun feature. Uh, any questions so far? Anything I've talked about that you're curious or what? What in the world does that button do? Anything like that? I don't see any. That's good. That's good. Another reason I just love to get to play this instrument, and I'll probably do some of these things when uh, we've got some downtime today, but one thing you can do that I like is to save your work, which is really important to people after a while. If you're a hobbyist like me and you don't want to do all that button pressing every time you sit down, you know, if there's a song you love to play, but you have to put on a, a Latin band, you got to speed it up, you got to pick the right instrument to play on. Maybe you don't want to do all that setup every time. What I can do is called memorize a preset or memorize a setup. Uh, you have what are called bank setups in this. Let me see if I have a picture. It's really simple. It looks like this here. Does that show on the screen there? Yes. Perfect. So what that is, is basically going to turn off your style setup here, and you can save what you're doing into a bank. Just like you store your money in a bank, you can store your favorite sounds and rhythms and settings. You can save those to your bank. So that's what I did today when I played, uh, what was the first song? Hello, Dolly? When I played that, I actually, right before I sat down, I saved it into there so I wouldn't have to think too much about what buttons I'm pressing in between. I just go from A1, A2, A3, because you can save them in there in whatever order you want. Uh, so that's one thing I like a lot about it because I can sort of keep track of what I'm doing. And not only that, if you want to, if you're brave enough, if you want to record yourself. There's a recorder on here, a music recorder. It's got three buttons. Record, stop, and play. It's foolproof. <laughs> when you want to record, you press record. You're right. And then when you want to stop, you hit stop. Yeah. So easy as that. And what's great is you can show other people, hey, look what I did, you know, because I'm not the type. I don't like to play in front of people too much. Uh, I'd much prefer to record something and then say, listen to it afterward. <laughs> um, but you have that. You have a music recorder. Uh, Kerry actually was uh, teaching a class the other day, and he mentioned uh, this is another great use for it. Uh, I've done this in the past, too, so I was glad he was mentioning it in this class. But he, he was saying how you can use the music recorder not just to show off or play, record a song for somebody, but what you can do is use it for practice. You can record yourself playing a song that maybe you've rehearsed enough, you feel up to it, you record it, and then when you listen back, you can listen back for any improvements. You know, oh, I didn't notice that when I was playing. You know, something like that. Uh, that's a great tool. You know, I, I used to do that all the time, and 
it's so funny because when you're playing, you don't realize some of the things you might say, wow, this sounds pretty good. And then you play it back and you're like, whoopsie, <laughs> I was playing this all wrong. But it's a really, really helpful tool because you can fix it. You can fix your mistakes right away. Um, so yeah, it's a great feature to have. And just the little things that I like too, this is one of the few instruments, I don't know if you could see it from there, probably not, but all the way over here you have some little holes in, holes in the instrument. You can stick things in there. One of them is a microphone input. So if you're somebody you just love to sing or you've got a husband or wife that loves to sing while you play, you can do a duet. You can plug in the microphone. You can have a jam session, a, a karaoke party, or you can just uh, use it as a pager for if somebody's parked in the wrong uh, parking space. You know, the owner of the blue Ford, please report to the parking lot. Your dog is on fire. Uh, but you can also, there's a stereo input right above that. And this is cool if you have, I don't have one with me, but like a cell phone that you play music out of sometimes. You can actually plug that right into this and listen to it like it's your uh, your stereo, you know, at home. You could crank it up real loud or keep it quiet, but really, really cool tool. Cool tool. You should call this workshop Cool Tools with Sean. So that's pretty much all I've got. I was going to show a couple more songs, uh, but before that, do we have any announcements or anything like that that we need to make? I guess not. Nobody's listening here, so. All right, so I'm going to play a couple rhythms I like a lot. This one is a pianist rhythm. So I've just got, just got two more. So this one's a pianist rhythm. Uh, I love to show this one because you can uh, you can use a lot of the features I've talked about today in this one uh, rhythm, and it's just going to sound good. There's a rhythm in here called Nolan's Pianist. So it's gospel with a pianist button on, and you get one of the new rhythms in here called Nolan's Pianist, like a New Orleans piano player. So it's going to sound like I'm playing gospel music in New Orleans. So let's do that. Let's do a just a closer walk with thee. And I'm actually going to start it out. Yep, that's the right key. I'm going to start it with my uh, a clarinet player on the bottom, just doing a little warm-up here. with my Louisiana piano player. You can just imagine them marching down the street uh, playing that with, you know, how pianos march and all that with the clarinet player and all the all the band there. So I got one more song to play. 
In this one, I don't get to play very often, so I, I get to mess it up in front of you guys, but that's okay because I'm having fun. And that's what's nice about the hobby player and the hobby instrument. Even if you make some mistakes, either nobody notices or it just still sounds good anyway. Because <laughs> like with this, this rhythm, I'm sure I'll goof up, but you know what? It's still going to sound good because all the guys in the background are supporting me. So here we go. This is from a movie called Grease. Uh, actually in made in the 70s, and it's uh, based in the 50s, so it's got a 1950s sound. There's a rhythm in here called You're the One, and it goes with the song from the film, You're the One That I Want. So I am going to switch cameras here, go back to this guy, and here's You're the One That I Want on the Lowry Journey. <laughs> Big round of Lots applause. Of, yeah, Give a lot of cool noise. styles in here from, from the 50s to the 60s music, the 70s. They've even got some 80s type music in here. Holy Any smoke. genre you need. Yeah. Sounds like you're Good job. Wow. I can play for hours on this. You really, Thank know you, how to play, you really know how to play a song or two, Sean, I tell you. Yeah, or three or four, but that's about it, okay. yeah. Well, okay, folks. So let's uh, let's give another big round of applause. And um, yeah, now what we're gonna do here in um, 